hi hello welcome back um i have taken a little bit longer than i thought i would to come back but here i am i'm back and i've had this pattern in the wings for a little while uh, but i just never like put it together into a video but i've finally done it it's not quite the end of august so i made it i mean it is the 29th today but it'll be it'll be okay uh <laughs> we made it before fall has happened so i think that's gonna be a success but i am here to bring you a new fall halloweeny kind of pattern <laughs> um and i'm gonna bring you these little ghosties They are super cute. I think they are adorable and they are absolutely no so, which is fantastic. I think this is a beginner friendly pattern. You do need to know how to actually do the stitches, but I do teach you how to do the little bobbles, um, which I am a huge fan of lately. So I think it's a, a beginner friendly pattern. You obviously, like if this is your first time crocheting, you're gonna have some trouble. This is not a, I've never crocheted before in my life pattern. This is a, I'm familiar with some stitches. It uses mostly uh, single crochets, uh, some slip stitches, and that's pretty much it, except for the bobble. The bobble is a little bit different. Increase, single crochet, slip stitch, bobble. That's it. So, I mean, if you could do those, I think you can you can do the, this pattern. This uses a very small amount of yarn. Um, so I think this is called, would be considered a stash buster, but I think they're super adorable. You can add like little tiny hats to them or little pumpkins beside them. I do have patterns for a witch's hat and a pumpkin on my YouTube channel. So you can check those out if you'd like. I am using a uh, yarn under, yarn under method. So sometimes I'll say yarn under, sometimes I'll say yarn over whichever your preference is if you don't know what the heck i'm talking about just do whatever you're comfortable with or i do have um a, pa a pattern i do have a video about yarn under versus yarn over if you want to check that out and learn i prefer the yarn under method uh the other thing is is that this has worked completely in the round um so no stopping no like slip stitching and then starting a new round it's just like you keep going the other thing is, is that you can use this pattern to make as many of these as you want. You can sell the products that you made from this pattern. However, I do ask that you reference me as the pattern owner when you do sell them. You sell them on Etsy, you can sell them on Market. So this, uh, this pattern is uh, available for you to use however you'd like. Uh, just make sure that you reference me as the pattern owner. That would be lovely. It helps me make more patterns, more free patterns for you guys to enjoy. So I would really appreciate it if you would do that for me. Um, I have started to work a little bit more on Ribbler lately. So from now on, from here on out, I am going to post the YouTube video here. Uh, I'm gonna try and add captions, which is new for me. And then the pattern is going to be found on Ribbler. So I will leave the link to the Ribbler pattern um, in the description for you to use if you prefer the written pattern. Um, and then you can use this alongside the uh, written pattern as well if you need any extra help. Okay, so hopefully that's all I needed to say. Uh, oh yeah. <laughs> Last thing, you can use whatever kind of yarn you want for this pattern. I am using like a size six yarn. You can use a size seven yarn and like bump up your crochet hook, the size of your crochet hook, or you can go down to like a size four yarn and use like a 3.0 millimeter hook. Honestly, that's the best thing about amigurumi is that you can size up and size down whatever you need. Um, and it pretty much turns out the same, especially with such a, like this pattern, it's such like a basic shape. You're able to size up and down as much as you need to. So if you wanna make a smaller little ghosty, you can size down the yarn and hook and get the same thing. Okay, so now that I've said my entire spiel, I'm gonna let you get into the pattern and we'll start off with materials. So I'm gonna be using Sweet Snuggles Light. It is just in white, I think. Yeah, 
it's just called white it's a super bulky size six yarn it's recommending an eight millimeter hook for this one but i am sizing down to something new to me i am going to a 5.0 millimeter hook normally i would use a 6.0 millimeter hook but i tried it out with the 5.0 and i and i think i like it better I don't know the stitches are just turning out better for me so i'm going with a 5.0 millimeter hook for this yarn we're going to be using some eight millimeter safety eyes i've chosen not to use the backings i'm going to just use some glue instead i'm just using fabric fusion it's just fabric glue i'm pretty sure you can just use whatever you want and then i have a uh, yarn needle that will fit the yarn. I've got a stitch marker. I've got some um, like black cotton thread and I have my scissors and then you'll also need some polyester fiber fill stuffing which is just I don't know just some stuffing you can use old stuffing from old stuffed animals or, or whatever but I just have polyester fiber fill and that's all we need. We really don't need that much stuff. How we're gonna do this is we are going to start by making the base of the ghost and then we're going to stop and then make the actual ghost itself and then crochet them together. So to do that, we are gonna start off with our slip knot and then we are going to chain two and then we are going to single crochet in the second chain from the hook so it's very hard to see with this very white yarn but there is this chain and then there is that chain right here and we're going into that furthest bump all the way over here and then we're going to single crochet eight in this loop here i'm going to back down here i'm just going to go into the same spot and put eight single crochets into that single loop. So then we get a circle of eight. So that's three, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and last one, eight. So we can go ahead and count our little bumps here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So my first stitch is right here. As uh, difficult as it is to see, it is right there. So I'm gonna put my stitch marker on the last stitch. And for the first round, we are going to uh, increase into every single stitch. So we will increase times eight. So every single stitch, we're gonna put two single crochets in. Oops. And da, da, da. so at the end of the round, we've doubled up on our stitches. So instead of eight uh, stitches at the end of the round, we should have 16. Okay, last stitch here. And I'm gonna give mine a count just to make sure. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, 15, 16. Okay, got 16. So now for round two, we are going to single crochet and then increase. So we'll single crochet the first one and then increase the next one. And we're gonna do that pattern all the way around or eight times total. Gotta give myself some slack here. So single crochet and then increase. So because we are doing a total of eight increases in this round, we are adding eight stitches and therefore we will have 24 stitches at the end of the round. So I've ended on an increase, which is correct. I should have 24 stitches, but we'll go ahead and count just to make sure. And I'm actually um, gonna take this back off. I thought I was continuing for a sec, but that's all we need for this piece. We are actually just gonna take our scissors and we're gonna snip leaving like not too much. You don't really need too much, but enough so that you can like handle it and work with it. And I've just pulled out the loop just so it's not gonna unravel on us. And then we're gonna put this off to the side. So we are gonna pick back up our yarn and we're gonna start the same way. We are gonna make a slip knot 
Whoa, that one did not work well. We're gonna make a slip knot, and then we are going to do our chain two, and then we're gonna single crochet eight in the second chain from the hook here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we're doing this chain two and single crochet and second chain from hook method instead of a magic circle because we're working with fluffy yarn. And I've just found like through experience that like working with the fluffy yarn, the chain two method like start works just much better. When you do a magic circle with the fluffy yarn, it tends to like pucker uh, in the center and it gives you like almost like a coning kind of shape instead of like a rounded shape so you know you can do the magic circle I just find it's more difficult to pull with that you know pull it closed and then it also just gives you kind of a weird shape so go with the chain two method so we've got one two three four five six seven eight I'm gonna grab my stitch marker here and for the first round we're gonna we're gonna pretty much start it the exact same way so we are going to increase into every single stitch all the way around so increase eight times that's one this is two this is three this is four this is five this is six this is seven and last one is eight so we had eight stitches we increased by eight giving us 16. so same thing as what we just did i'm gonna move those off <laughs> Okay, so round two is going to be single crochet increase. So exactly what we just did for that first piece. So we're gonna do single crochet and then increase. Okay, so it's over two stitches, the single crochet, and then you increase into the next one. And we're gonna do that eight times around total. So one and two just all the way back around. And because we are increasing eight times in this round, we will be adding eight stitches, meaning we will have 24 stitches at the end of the round, which is exactly what we had in the other piece. And then my last increase here. So we'll have 24 stitches here. If you want, you can give it a count just to make sure. And then for the next five rounds, we're just gonna be uh, single crocheting all the way around. So single crochet 24 stitches all the way around and then for five rounds total. So I'm gonna meet you at the end of that round. All right, so I am just finished round seven. We finished our five rounds of straight single crocheting of 24 stitches around. Um, so now we're gonna go ahead and add in the arms. So I have been a huge fan of using like bobble stitches for feet and hands lately. Uh, not sure if you've noticed, um, but if this is the first time that you're watching one of my videos, um, hi, hello, this is for you. <laughs> Um, so first we're going to start off on round eight with a single crochet of eight. So one, two, uh, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. And then we are going to do our bobble. So our bobble is just like a series of yarn overs and pulling through two. It is only one stitch and counts as only one stitch. So remember that it's not, you don't do it over a course of a couple of stitches. You do it in the same loop, in the same stitch. So we're gonna start by yarning over or in my case, yarning under because yarn under, yarn under. Uh, so yarn under and then into the stitch, yarn under, pull up a loop, yarn under, pull through, two. Oh, that was all three. 
but that's two. <laughs> okay, and then we're gonna do that again. So yarn under into the same stitch, not the next stitch over, pull up a loop, yarn under, pull through two. So now we have three on our hook. We're gonna do it one more time. Yarn under into the same stitch, not the next one, pull up a loop, yarn under, pull through two. So now we have four on our on our hook here. And all we're gonna do is yarn under and pull through all of them. Okay, so this leaves us with one stitch right here. You notice how there's like, see these little V, well, <laughs> let's see if you can see these little Vs, but there is just like one stitch right here. That's it. There's, there's a bunch of like yarn overs or yarn unders in here, but it only results in one stitch being made right here. So we are going to continue on and find our next stitch over. So all of these bobbly bits are coming out of this hole right here and we're going to go over into the next one. So we're just going to do a single crochet in here. So this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So we've done eight in between, and now we're gonna repeat that bobble over here. So into the next stitch, we are gonna start by yarning over or under. I'm gonna call it yarn under or yarn over, but just remember it's whichever way that you pick up your, your yarn. So yarn over into the stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. Yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now I've got three. Yarn over into the same stitch, yarn over, pull up a loop, yarn over, pull through two. So now I have four. Yarn over and pull through all of them, okay? And then we are going to single crochet the rest of the stitches. There should be six uh, single crochets here. So one, two, three, four, five, and last one is six. Okay, so that was the end of round eight, and we still have 24 stitches. Remember, these bobbles don't add stitches. They just yarn under a bunch, and then we kind of cinch them all together under one roof, which is one stitch. <laughs> so moving on through to round nine, um, we still have 24 stitches here. So we're going to single crochet 24 and I'm going to do round nine with you. So I'm going to just go all the way around and I'm going to go to my bobble because um, sometimes the bobbles are hard to get through, but you just need to remember that it is one stitch. So I've done my eight single crochets and then I'm like, okay, what the heck is going on here? It's not this, it's not this. Don't try and go through here or here or whatever. Flip this like towards you, like almost like try and invert it because your stitch is actually like here. It, it's so hard to see with the white yarn, but it's actually like right here. So you're looking for those two loops here. You're gonna go in and this is your single crochet right there. And then this one is your next one. Hopefully that makes sense even with the white yarn. Um, but I am gonna move all the way over. We're just single crocheting. We're gonna move over to our next bobble. So there should be eight in between there. And then we've come to our next bobble. Same thing, our, our stitch is right here. It's not here, it's here. <laughs> Hopefully you can see that. So that's the single crochet there. And then we continue on with our remaining six. Last one is six. Okay, so we have two more rounds of single crochet of 24 a piece. So we'll do 24 all the way around and then 24 all the way around. So it will be rounds 10 and 11 uh, that are straight single crochet. So I'm gonna finish those up and then I will meet you once I'm done. Okay, so I finished round 11 um, and we still have 24 stitches. We haven't added or subtracted any. And this is kind of what we've got. So if you want, you can stop here and embroider the um, 
the little mouth and put in the eyes. If you are doing the backings for the eyes, it is a good idea to put them in now because now you see exactly where your little bobbles are, which are your hands. So you can see where you want to put your eyes. So this is completely up to preference. If you don't want to use my suggestion, that's totally fine. But I go through um, between rounds five and six so we can count down. So this is our, our magic circle here. And then we go one, two, three, four, five, and six. So I'm just going to briefly place them. I'm pretty sure I placed them four holes apart. So one, two, three, about there. And if you want to move them around because you don't like the look of them, that's totally fine. Um, because sometimes, sometimes the, the arms just don't line up the way that you think they're going to. One, two, three. Yeah, I think... I feel like I did them four apart here. We did them two, right? One, two, three, four. Yeah, this one's <laughs> so funny how sometimes it just doesn't happen. One, two, three, four. Okay, we might go with something like that. So you can do them three or four holes apart. I mean, I feel like that's okay. I also don't want him to be looking left or right. I want him to be looking straight. So um, I'm going to suggest to put them between rounds five and six and then four holes apart. One, two, three, four. So there's four empty holes in between the eyes and then there's the two eyes on the outside. So that you'll have um, plenty of space to make your little mouth there. But, like I said, I like to use glue lately, so I am going to leave that till the end. I prefer the glue too because you can place them right on top and they don't like sink into the fabric. Fabric? I mean, I don't think it's technically, is it? I don't think it's technically fabric, right? Into Whatever. They don't sink into the stitch. I don't know. I just find that it looks better when I can just kind of like place it right on top. So we kind of just stopped and i pulled out my hook here and i'm gonna leave my stitch marker on this last stitch here and now this is where we're gonna bring back in this little piece here so i'm gonna make sure that the right side is facing upwards instead of the wrong side so if you have the the yarn tail coming out the bottom of your piece flip that bad boy around and I'm going to line it up where the stitch that the yarn is coming out of here is my first stitch. So <laughs> this is going to be a little bit tricky. We have a lot in our hands and we're going to be kind of crocheting these two pieces together. So I'm going to go into the first stitch on my piece and then take this piece and go into this, the first stitch on that piece. And then I'm going to take the yarn that's coming from my ball of yarn, not this cut one, and I'm going to yarn under and make a slip stitch that goes through both pieces. Okay, so that's my first stitch. My second stitch, I'm going to go into the, the next stitch over on my piece, like my, my main body, and then into the little flap piece. I'm going to yarn under and we're going to do a single crochet here, okay? And then we are going to do the same thing in the next stitch. We're going to single crochet both of these two pieces together. So you can see I'm, I'm trying to show you I'm going through two, two like separate pieces and I'm going to single crochet them together. Okay. So, so far we've done three stitches and we've done slip stitch, single crochet, single crochet, and then we're going to do a slip stitch to bring both of those together. So this will be our pattern. Our pattern is slip stitch, single crochet, single crochet, slip stitch. We're gonna repeat that, um, I believe six times around. So <laughs> we're gonna start off again with a slip stitch. We're gonna slip stitch both of these two together. So slip stitch and then single crochet and then single crochet. Sometimes I have to like move the piece around so I can see what I'm doing. And then slip stitch. Okay. 
<laughs> that was our second little bump. And then I'm gonna do it again. So slip stitch, single crochet. We gotta find the next one over. Single crochet, find the next stitch over. And then slip stitch. And then we're doing it again. So slip stitch. Then single crochet. Single crochet. And then slip stitch. Oh, I almost did a single crochet there, but that's not right. Uh, and then we're gonna slip stitch again. We're starting over. So slip stitch, single crochet, single crochet, whoop, and then slip stitch. And now before we do our final set of four stitches, so you should have four stitches left on your piece, that flat piece, and then four stitches left on here. I know it is so hard to see, but just be patient. If it doesn't line up, like just don't, don't panic. Don't worry about it. If it looks like it's all like seamed up and put together, just go with it. It's not, it's not worth getting frustrated because as long as it's seamed up and there's like no like gaping hole, it's fine. It'll be fine. <laughs> Don't worry. Um, so we're going to stop here and I'm going to give this piece a good stuff. I'm going to leave this yarn tail from our flat piece on the outside. So let's grab our stuffing. I have a bunch here, but I'm probably not going to use all of it. And we're just going to give this guy a good stuff. So I like to stuff the top of the head and the, the outside of the piece. And then I kind of stuff the middle of the piece and that gives like a nice consistent fill that it doesn't feel too bumpy, but these are really small anyways. So, I mean, it doesn't matter too much. Just, just stuff them. And then you want to make sure that you're not stuffing too much because if you do that, we might push this part out and we want that to stay flat. So try and keep your stuffing to the body, like the body section. And then you don't want to like stuff this part out. So once you think that you are happy and it still remains quite flat there, we can continue on stitching. So I'm going to grab my hook here and we have one more set of four to do. So we start with our slip stitch. So we just need to find where our stitches are here. So our slip, slip stitch, <laughs> and then we do single crochet, single crochet. And then lastly, you can see my stitch marker is holding that last stitch here. I am going to slip stitch my last one. So I can tell just based on like my history of crocheting, I can tell where that stitch is. But if you notice that there's still a little bit of a hole, literally just find anything to pick up and try and slip stitch that together. But it's so much easier when you can identify your stitches um, but that just takes practice and time and, you know, just keep crocheting. So I am going to trim that bad boy and we are going to take our yarn needle and thread that guy on. And then we're going to do like an invisible finish into this stitch right here. So kind of just the next stitch that you can find. Um, this one has my yarn coming out of it. So I'm going to go into this one here. So just the next stitch over, we're going to go under both loops and then pull out here. And then we're going to go back into our last stitch that we made and only go through the back loop. So if I was going through both loops, it would look like that, but I'm just going through the back loop right there. Cool. So now I, 
decided I just wanted to tie these two together so you can just make a little knot here with these two and then we can hide these yarn tails through the piece so we don't even have to make like one of those yarn knots that we always do with amigurumi we literally just tie the two together uh, and then we'll we'll pull through and hide the hide the tails through the piece And then I can kind of bunch this out and make sure that it's nice and nice and neat and I can trim my tails. There we go. I'm just going to pull away all that extra fluff and we kind of have something like this. I think it's a pretty good shape. Um, I don't know about what you guys think, but I think it's pretty cute. And so what I like to do is I like to find and position my eyes first and then I will do some embroidery of the mouth. So I apparently like them about four <laughs> stitches away or four holes away so we can count them one, two, three, four holes away from each other. And then I will try to embroider the mouth in between. So because we have four holes to work with we can make that middle stitch like the center stitch oh god I pulled out my eye okay and so I'm just gonna go from the back of the piece to the like the middle left hole and then this is where you can get creative and do whatever kind of smile if you want a happy face you can do um, a V shape if you just want like a line you just go across into the next hole and then out the back and then we've got like our little little mouth where he's just he looks like he's got just a tiny little smile and you can kind of pull that yarn out a little bit to uh, make it a little more prevalent and then sometimes if I find that the fluffy yarn is going over it too much I'll just like take some really sharp scissors and like trim that fluff away so it's not hiding that uh, that yarn anymore. So he can sometimes looks sad, sometimes looks happy, depending on how the, the yarn is positioned. But you can do like a little V shape or like an upside down V to make him a little angry. But I'm gonna, I think I'm going to stick with something like that. Um, and I'm just going to make sure I have enough yarn tail there. So I'm going to pull out the one side. <laughs> to make sure I have enough yarn to tie them together. So I'm going to leave it a little bit loose and then I'm going to make a knot right here. Make sure that this is coming out of the same hole though. If they're coming out two different holes, they're not going to hide away in the way that you're thinking they will. <laughs> so let's trim those tails and then I'm going to stuff that back through. And then make sure that I like how this looks because we can still move things around. Don't panic. We can still move things around. And then I'm going to grab my fabric glue. I'm running out, so I'm right at the very end. But I'm going to take, take that out, put a little dollop there, and then put the eye back in. And then same thing over here. Oh, we've got a bigger dollop there. I shook too much up so we have our little ghosties okay so if you've made it here you have finished the pattern so hopefully you guys liked it of course if you liked it leave a like on the video leave a comment let me know via instagram or discord or whatever all of the links are in the description. I would love to see your little ghosty makes. And again, if you like this pattern or if you want me to keep making patterns, please remember to like the video, subscribe, all of that YouTube stuff. It does help a lot uh, in supporting me and making new patterns for you guys. So anyways, I will see you guys in the next one. Bye.